Almighty God, Holy Spirit, we pray that you would blow among us like a rushing wind, that you would descend upon us and change and transform us into the people that you have called us to be. Thank you so much for joining us in worship. Amen. Again, welcome to the bridge at 314. It's such, such, such a great day to be here. Um, we are about to do a brand new song for the bridge. You might have heard it if you listen to Christian radio, and it's called Child of Love. Um, super, super fun song. We're really, really excited about it. But what I like about it are um, the constant reminders in this song that we are children of love, that we are children of of God, And that's what we're celebrating today with our graduates. It's also what we're celebrating in Pentecost is the beginning of that family of faith. And so this is Child of Love. in the heart. 
seat. Good morning. That was a fun sound. I like that. That was awesome. Today is a bittersweet day in the life of a youth minister when you have graduation Sunday because you're excited and sad all at the same time. And so I thought we need to have some fun with graduation as well, graduation Sunday. So we are going to do a uh, Would You Rather uh, graduation edition. And so what I want everyone to do is to stand up where you're at and then... Uh, and so that you'll be able to, we're going to do the would you weather for you just kind of turn around and share with the people in the room your answers to these graduation Sunday. And so we'll get to know each other just a little bit better. So everybody stand up and be ready to share with the people around you the answers to these would you rather. Here's the first one. Would you rather show up late, 30 minutes late to the ceremony or have to get there three hours early? So go ahead and share that with the people around you. <laughs> I bet if your last name starts with the A, you said be there early. Because 30 minutes late, you might have done missed your name. All right. The next one is would you rather get dropped off in a Ferrari for graduation or get dropped off in a private helicopter just laying right there on the field? <laughs> All right, here's the next one. Would you rather sit in the front row or sit in the very back? <laughs> All right, do we have do we have another one? Yeah, okay. Would you rather sit through a 20-minute speech at graduation, or you have to give a five-minute speech in front of everyone. All right, thank you for playing. Wave to everybody. Welcome everybody here to church. And at this time, Pastor Brenner is going to come up and have a children's message for the children. And so we invite the children to come down. I think we got one or two more coming. <laughs> Everybody has their own opinions. <laughs> Good morning, Jonah. We're going to run a race. We're going to run a race. Anybody? All right. So I want y'all to come with me where I am. Come over here. All right. <laughs> All right. Now, it doesn't look much like it, but those two chairs right there, they're going to be our finish line. All right? We're not quite far enough away. Y'all aren't running enough. All right. All right. I want you to run to the chairs and run back three times. Can you do that on your mark? Get set, go. One time, two more. One time, there you go. Go, go, go. Keep going. Woo! 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 All right. Good job. Everybody give them a big round of applause. That's good. You did it. All right. Wait a minute. Now sit down a second. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh, dear. All right. <laughs> well, what you just did is you finished the race, right? I gave you an assignment. And you finished the race. And so coming back and hitting me the last time was sort of like the finish line, right? Like have you ever run a race at school, like a sack race or something, and you have a line that's the finish line? Right? All right. And so when you finish your race, you're pretty excited and happy. Good? Everybody's cheering. You know, you've accomplished something, and it's really great. All right? And so y'all did great with that. That was a good race and easy. That, in a way, is what we do all through life. Like our students that are graduating today, they got through a finish line. I graduated on you graduated? Okay. Right? So you graduated. Woo! All right. So is this from kindergarten? 
you graduated from pre-K, right? Okay. And so next year you'll graduate from kindergarten. And those that are graduating today are graduating all the way from high school or college. So can you imagine doing this for another 12 years? Another 16 years? <laughs> every year. But every year you'll get to celebrate. And so what happens in life is you get to one finish line and you celebrate and everybody claps and you have a good time and you should celebrate and have a lot of fun. But then you have another race to run or you have another year of school to go. And what, the, what God says about that, first of all, all of that's a gift that we get to run races and we get to go to school and we get to do all those fun things. But God tells us to do our best at it. So whether you're in school and studying or whether you're running a race to do your best, he wants us to celebrate because in the Bible, people celebrate. They go to weddings. They go to parties because he wants us to say thank you for life and all the good things. And then he wants you to run another race because that won't be your last race. That was just a little race on a Sunday morning. I bet you're going to have lots of other races in life. So we thank God for the races and the challenges. We celebrate them. And then we think about what does God want us to do next? All right. So like next for you is kindergarten. All right, and next for you, this summer might be a whole lot of races, a lot of running and fun stuff. All right, so let's have a prayer. God, thank you for legs for running. Thank you for school for learning. Thank you for all the fun and good things we get to do. Um, and just help us to do our best at them always and figure out what the next race is you want us to run. Amen. Thank you. That was great. children's time and prayer time. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, you'll pray for me. I apologize for that very poor transition there. I'm not used to doing that, so I was a little bit lost. So, But uh, congratulations to all our graduates. Not all of them are here, but Aaron's here right now, and thank you. You're doing what you're always doing. You're, you're serving, and you're, you're sharing your gifts and your talents, and what a, what a blessing that is to us that you're always doing that so thank you to um, all of our graduates congratulations to them our prayer time will be a prayer for them we will continue to pray for all of those grieving and that we'll do a better job of protecting all the children in the world that's still just really heavy on my heart right now that we'll keep doing that and um, continuing to pray for all of those who are sick we love you and we want you better. So let's just begin with a little time of silence and let's pray. Almighty God, we do praise your name. You created an amazing world and you created us in your image. Every moment is a miracle from you every opportunity, every challenge, every breath, every step, every new life and every child is a miracle from you. You created a world that sustains life and has more breathtaking beauty than we can describe. Your faithfulness to us is beyond our imagining. And Lord, we rely solely on your mercy and your forgiveness. We come thanking you for so much today. We thank you for the completion of another academic year, for the teachers and their dedication throughout the year, for all of the students, whether they're graduating from pre-K or middle school or high school or college or master's degree. We especially thank you for all of our graduates this spring, and we are grateful for your guidance and your love in their lives. We pray today that you bless and guide Ben and Sam and John and Taylor and Scott and Aaron as they cross this finish line and as they chart new beginnings. Help them to use all that they have learned to make the world a better place. Help them to serve others and to always seek the greater good. Keep them always learning and growing spiritually, emotionally, socially, mentally. 
strengthen their inner beings for whatever challenges lie ahead. And Lord, strengthen all of our inner beings, strengthen our resolve of the leaders at every level and in every place, a resolve to protect the sacredness of life. Lord, break down our pride, and it seems like our love of arguing. Break all of that down and help leaders to come together and work to solve, O oh Lord, or at least to make headway on helping those with mental health issues, on lessening the amount of violence in our world, of protecting especially the most vulnerable among us. Lord, we continue to pray for all of those who are grieving, those families who lost children at Robb Elementary School. We pray for children everywhere, children whose lives are being lost or traumatized in Ukraine, all of those who have gone through wars, refugee children, children in third worlds, children who are trafficked. Lord, strengthen our resolve to protect the most vulnerable among us. Show us the next steps. Lord, be with us close to home. We've had many people sick, and we just pray for their continued recovery, and thank you for that. We pray especially for those that have been in our hearts and continue in our hearts day in and day out, for Donna and Monica and Howard and Jackie and Nancy and Janice and Ray and so many right now, Lord, that just need your healing. Give them the peace that passes all understanding. Work through all of your avenues for healing. Lord, draw us closer to one another and closer to you that we will honor you in all that we do. Amen. We'll be recognizing our graduates officially in the 1110 service. So if you'd like, we'd love for you to stay for that. But we do have a video celebrating our um, Six Mears Chapel graduates. So take a look.
give our graduates a big hand. Congratulations, guys. During this next song, we will be collecting um, offerings digitally. So you can use um, the QR code there above my head to give your gifts um, either through our PayPal handle or through our giving site. You can also use the offering box by the door on your way out into the world. Let's stand and sing together, be in a time of spirit of reflection and gratitude.
Holy Spirit, thank you for all the ways that you have so richly blessed our lives, and we offer all of ourselves and a part of our gifts to you. Amen. You may be seated. This is one of our bicentennial celebration videos. I think I feel closest to others here at Mears Chapel around the holidays. And we just went through a Christmas season that was, um, you know, it was nice to be back together in light of the time we have spent apart over the last couple years. And so when the church gets decorated for Christmas, when we come together on Christmas Eve services, you have a lot of folks return to church that have maybe moved away or have maybe not been coming as frequently. And it's great to see a lot of familiar faces back and it uh, feels like a big family. Church is the people, but as I've said, growing up here, you grow up around families. And so I feel like I have all of these extra moms around me and all of these extra dads and that, you know, I wouldn't be the person that I am today without these people in my life and, and growing up with them and, and having the relationships I have with them because we all came to church together and we were all around each other all the time. It is like a second family. When I, um, when I think back about, you know, my childhood and growing up and, you know, the teenage, the tough teenage years, um, the times when I struggled mo most with my faith and with leading a Christian lifestyle was, um, you know, when I wasn't as connected to the church. And I just realized that, that, you know, this church has provided me with, you know, with accountability, with, you know, love, with acceptance, with, um, you know, and then just challenging me to always, you know, continue to grow my faith and to, ex you know, question, um, you know, when I had questions and, and lead me to the answers, you know, when I needed them. We have so many kids that need that one person or need those counselors or that minister or that director to, to be there for them. They need that third parent to love them, to care for them, to laugh with them, even to cry with them. I've done that a lot. And it really is a big part of my life. And then I guess that's why I, I'm still here. I've got a passion for youth ministry, and um, now I also have a, a seventh grader. And so he, I get to watch him start to um, participate in youth activities like I did, how much he enjoys it. And so I want to be there to not only witness his enjoyment, but to, to help out uh, in any way that I can. The reason that I've continued to be a member of Mears Chapel um, now as a parent, you know, I, I really think back again about me growing up and how important that connection was to church. And, you know, I want my kids to be surrounded with those who share similar morals and beliefs and values. And um, I just think that's really important. And you need that support. You need that um just that extra family, that village to help raise our children um, in a society where, you know, it can be very difficult to be a parent right now. And so, you know, it's, it's comforting to me to know that my kids will also be, you know, raised and um, supported by people that are in this church.